Hey, what's up guys? Scott here from Mobile Install Guide. And in this video, I'll be teaching you how to use your digital multimeter to measure resistance and test for continuity. Now, a lot of you may already know what resistance is, but you might be wondering, how do I measure it? Or what is continuity and what is it used for? Well, in this video, I'll be answering all those questions and make sure you stick around to the end where I'll show you a cool trick using the continuity test to save a ton of troubleshooting time. But first, let's head to the whiteboard. Make sure we all get started on the same page with a quick crash course and resistance. So even though water and electricity don't exactly play well together, water does make for a pretty good analogy of how electricity works. And to help explain the concept of resistance, I've drawn a couple of water pipes here. Now this top water pipe has a consistent diameter all the way through, so water can flow through it unobstructed. But the second water pipe has a section in the middle where the diameter is reduced. So if we imagine water flowing through this pipe, like so, it doesn't matter how large the pipe is on either end, it's only going to flow as much water as this section in the middle will allow. So the smaller section of pipe is restricting the flow of water. And this same concept applies to electricity, only instead of flowing water, we're flowing electrons and we call it current. In an electrical circuit, resistance restricts the flow of current, and the more resistance you have, the less current will flow. I can go into more detail on this concept in a future video, but for now, I just want to give everybody a basic understanding of what we're measuring when we measure resistance. So now let's figure out how to set up your meter to measure resistance. So resistance is measured in ohms, and the symbol for ohms is this omega symbol right here that looks like a horseshoe. This is the setting we want to set the meter to in order to measure resistance. And since this is an auto ranging meter, I don't have to worry about setting the range. When you plug in your test leads, the black test lead will go in this common port here, and for the red test lead, you're looking for the port that's marked with the omega symbol. If you have a manual ranging meter like this one, the test lead setup is the same, but you'll need to set the dial to the resistance range that you're expecting. If you don't know what to expect, you can set it to the highest range and work your way down. I'll show you how this works a little later in the video. Now that we've got the meter figured out, let's take a look at an example of how you might put it to use measuring resistance in your installation project. One of the most common applications for measuring resistance when you're installing mobile electronics is to measure the resistance of a speaker's voice coil or multiple voice coils connected in series or parallel. In this example, I'll be talking a little bit about series and parallel connections, and if you're not familiar with these terms and what they mean, I'll put a link down in the description for a blog post on my website that goes in depth on how to wire up subwoofers and a bunch of different configurations. Check it out if you'd like to learn more. So when you're connecting a subwoofer to an amplifier, you're typically shooting for a specific ohm load that the amplifier specs will give you. For example, the specs might say that the amplifier delivers 1000 watts RMS at a 2 ohm load. If your subwoofer is rated for 1000 watts RMS, then you'll be aiming to connect it to the amplifier at a 2 ohm load. There are formulas you can use to figure out what the final resistance will be when you're connecting multiple voice calls together, but you might want to verify that you got it right with the meter, or maybe you don't know what the resistance of the voice calls are, so you want to find out. So let's take a look at how you would do that. This subwoofer that I have here has two 4 ohm voice coils, and you can see that by the markings here and here. If I want to verify that, I can use my multimeter that's set up to measure resistance. I'll put the black test lead on one end of the voice coil, and the red test lead on the other end of the voice coil. Now once the meter catches up, I can see that it's measuring just under 4 ohms. Now that's pretty normal. In fact, a lot of manufacturers will design the resistance of the voice coil to be slightly less than what they say it is. And that's to compensate for the resistance of the wire that you use to hook it up. The idea is that the resistance of the voice coil plus the wire will be about 4 ohms. Now let's connect the two voice coils together in series and see what we get. To connect them in series, we'll take the positive side of one voice coil and connect it to the negative side of the other voice coil, and then we'll measure across the two voice coils. In a series connection, the resistance of each voice coil will add together, so we should see just under 8 ohms on the meter, and that's what we get. Now let's connect them together in parallel. To do that, we'll connect positive to positive, and negative to negative. Now on a parallel connection, the total resistance will be half of the resistance of one of the voice coils. So altogether we should see about 2 ohms on the meter. So this is the configuration that you would want to use on the amplifier in this example. 
Now let me swap out this meter for the manual ranging one, and I'll quickly show you how to step through the ranges to find the right one. So I've got the manual ranging meter set up, and I still have the two voice coils on the subwoofer connected in parallel, so we know that we should see about two ohms. But if we didn't know that, we'd want to start at a higher range on the meter and work our way down. So we'll turn the meter on, and we'll start at say the 20k or 20,000 ohm range, and you can see on the readout that we're getting all zeros. This tells us that the resistance that we're measuring is well below 20,000 ohms. So if we step down to the 2k or 2000 ohm range, we start to get an idea of what the resistance is that we're measuring, but it's still not very precise. So we'll go one step farther to the 200 ohm range, and now we see a more precise reading with one decimal place. Now that we have a good handle on measuring resistance, let's talk about what continuity is and how you can use it. When you test for continuity, you're testing if there is a continuous path for current to flow between the two points that you place the test leads. I'll give you an example to show you what I mean, but first we need to set up the meter to test for continuity. The test leads will go in the same ports that you use to measure resistance, but the setting you're looking for is this one right here with the sound waves or the Wi-Fi symbol, depending on how you look at it. On this auto ranging meter, since that setting does multiple functions, I'll need to press the select button until I see that same symbol show up on the screen. You can test to make sure that you're in the right setting by touching the two test leads together and the meter will give you a beep. That beep sound is the meter telling you that there's continuity between the test leads. To demonstrate the concept of continuity, I'll connect one test lead to either side of this piece of wire. The meter beeps letting me know that there's a path for current to flow between these two points. Now if I cut the wire, there's obviously no more path for current to flow and the meter stops beeping. Now let's head to the garage and see how we can put this simple concept to use to save us a lot of time troubleshooting. If you've ever had to try and figure out why a certain component in your car isn't turning on, then you may have come across this scenario. You go to your fuse box hoping to find the fuse for the circuit. But after reading all the fuse labels, it's not obvious which fuse to look at. So you start pulling every fuse one by one and checking to see if it's blown. This process is really time consuming, so let me show you how you can use a continuity test to cut that time way down. If you look closely at the top of this typical automotive fuse, you can see that there are two exposed pieces of metal here and here. These two pieces are connected to either side of the fuse, and when the fuse is intact, there will be continuity between these two pieces. When the fuse is blown, there's no continuity. So we can use this to quickly check each fuse in the fuse box with the meter without ever pulling the fuse. All right, I've replaced one of the fuses in this fuse box with a blown fuse. So let's see how quickly I can find it using this method of testing continuity across the fuse. Okay, there's no continuity there, so let's check it. And that's blown. There's our guy. So you can imagine, since there are multiple fuse boxes with lots of fuses in them throughout the vehicle, that this little trick can save you a lot of time over pulling each fuse one by one. Well, that concludes this tutorial on how to use your digital multimeter to measure resistance and test for continuity. If you haven't already seen my other videos on measuring DC voltage and current, I've left the links down in the description below. And if you're looking for some more in-depth explanations on how to use your digital multimeter, head over to mobileinstallguide.com and check out the blog posts. I've left the links for the homepage and the blog posts down in the description. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, and if you learned some today, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel to catch all my videos. And don't forget to leave me a comment to let me know if there's any topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video.